clerk will read out the names. A very good day to you. You're welcome again on our program on television, Parliament and Governance. My name is Evan Sunokoge. Well, today on the program Parliament and Governance, just as we always ensure that we enlighten you, we keep you abreast with activities of the Nigerian legislature. You talk about the, Fed, the National Legislature, that's the Senate, and of course the Federal House of Representatives. And of course, uh, the 36 state houses of assemblies will look at legislative issues as it borders on governance. Well, today on Parliament and Governance, we are going to be looking at uh, the recent one now, talking about uh, what is happening to uh, the embattled IPOP secessionist uh, leader, uh, talking about uh, Nade Kano. We understand that recently, the AP courts in Abuja had to discharge Nandi Kano. But uh, as we speak now, Nandi Kano is still on that custody of the DSS. What are the issues? What best ways can we employ uh, so that uh, Nandi Kano finally gets uh, freedom? That's one big question on the lips of uh, people. Well, today to discuss all this, we are so privileged to have Don Etiunsa Igebo. He's a political analyst and, of course, a public affairs analyst. Sir, you're welcome to this program, Parliament and Governance. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, viewers. All right. Now, we saw the position of the Court of Appeal leveling, as a matter of fact, all cases against uh, Nandi Kano and, of course, uh, saying that uh, he's, uh, he can go home. But uh, Nandi Kano, we are told that is still under the custody of the DSS. What is your immediate reaction to that? Well, I think um, the problems with the Nandi Kano situation is very unfortunate. Um, um, I believe that for those who is for and against are looking at the um, goodwill of the country, you know, um, whether it is from the part of the federal government or perhaps Unam Nikano himself who felt the need to engage in some of the activities that he has engaged in, um, perhaps may have the kind of pros and cons, perhaps who is for and against. I don't think the fault particularly lies in one particular aspect of the spectrum and perhaps knowing fully well that the legal system, which is the arms of, arm of government, who is supposed to address dispute mm -hmm. between maybe a legislative arm of government and the, and the society or the community, having their own input in, in the process as, as it goes along. I personally think it's very unfortunate because this, these disagreements and issues has led to a lot of loss of lives and destruction of properties, as well as the circumstances surrounding how Unabrican was repatriated to Nigeria uh, having its own um, legal implications as to whether or not the federal government has done the right thing or not. Um, it has been an ongoing issue, and I believe personally that uh, it, is, it is not good for democracy. It is not good for the indigenous, indigenous of this country. It is not good for the international community to see us as a country yeah. who enjoys so much uh, uh, embedment of wealth and irrespective of that we're still um, very militia like in nature whether in the part of the civilian or the secessionist or whoever feels the need of being changed or perhaps maybe the people in authority who wants to correct that impression I think um, all hands needs to be on deck if okay. we must find a kind of a balance if you like okay all right so the word is discharged but not acquitted uh, that's uh, the way that uh, the Court of Appeal put it some few days ago. Now, the implication of that is that uh, Nandi Kano, Kano has been freed of all 15 uh, charges against him uh, that ranges from secessionist tendencies and, of course, uh, treasonable felony unlawful possession of firearms. Now, uh, as it stands now, we understand that uh, the Southeast Senate caucus at the National Assembly are kind of pushing for the release. Uh, the big question is, uh, what is actually the difference between uh, discharge and acquainted because uh, it looks as if we are kind of trying to uh, understand when somebody is discharged does it necessarily mean that the person has been acquainted of all charges against uh, against that person well um, there are instances for instance when it went so they had problems with the federal government on certain issues 
Um, by the time it goes to court and is perhaps discharged or acquitted, whichever language it deems fit to use, he can be rearrested the minute he steps out, which you and I have seen in the recent past. Um, whether or not the court has said he's discharged, what I understand in my own little experience within this place is that if somebody is discharged, it's discharged. It's, it's asked to go home. And it's like acquitted. There's no, there's no charges against him. If you're discharged and acquitted, it's like two words that mean the same thing. You see what I'm saying? So why has the federal government kept him hostage now? Well, you see, there's a lot of political undertone on this issue. Because from the very onset, with what was happening with the Biafran radio, with Inamdikani broadcasting, perhaps from England and people following his lead in that very hostile ideology, it, it, it was something that was very political. He believed that his region was from strange where he's from. He believed that a lot of things that is happening looking at the federal government in the center was not being fair to them. That is on his own opinion. But for some of us who was looking at issues from the outside, I was thinking, well, wait a minute. What is your business with the federal government? I mean, the regional, regions you are talking about has their governors. They have their senators. They have the House of Representative members. They have the ministers. All these guys are domicile and indigenous people from that region. So if there's a, a, a lapse in development, as you claim, Perhaps that is my opinion. Maybe there are other democratic ways you can address it. Perhaps if those governors were not doing what they were supposed to do, because there was no re-indication of whether or not the federal government led by His Excellency President Mohamed Buhari was shortchanging your region of any resources that was due to them. And those resources was meant for the indigenous people who has elected their governors or you know, their House of Representatives and um, senators to attract federal government projects to those regions um, perhaps may not be doing what they were supposed to do. So my take on that path was why, why, is it, why is it taking this path? Why not looking at things from a democratic norms, which obviously has led to all these problems. But at the end of the day, my point is that it is a political issue. It has always been a political issue. I do strongly believe that it will be, this problem will be best resolved through a political uh, uh, um, application so, it, it, if you know if there could be any end in sight of these issues because remember when in the canoe who's a who claimed to be a Biafran brother he's a Biafran person yeah, yeah. Well, well that is what he said yeah. was instigating violence the federal government was totally against it they didn't like that you know he was arrested and tried he claimed that he was almost getting killed and he jumped bail and things like that and he was in a safe place and asking people here to fight and, 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 and use that as a means of passing their message to the federal, uh, to the government of the day. To me, I just felt that was perhaps, in my view, the wrong approach to a very large extent. The federal government didn't like that. So they, on their own, knowing fully well that it is a matter that is going beyond them, they needed to find any means, whether lawful or unlawful, because there was arguments to say, well, if you must do certain things, it doesn't matter which means you use to achieve it. So even now the candle was repatriated, but it didn't matter if it was put on the mouth of a fish and it's brought out in Anambra or Enugu, or if it was put on a plane without documentation. You know, that becomes a matter of, um, of um, establish, establishing the fact through the legal processes, because mm -hmm. whatever we do is governed by law. So I believe that, you know, with the, to show you how complex the issues are, that is where the instances of discharge and acquitted has become a subject of debate mm. because it doesn't have a clear cut solution because there's been so much right and wrong, especially when lives have been lost, properties have been destroyed. Because in our system, the issues of arson and treasonable felony as part of the you know, nucleus, uh, in a nucleus of a, a democratic tendencies on institutional attachment of which laws governs us starts to come up from everywhere, depending on what you used to to better your argument, this is what I'm saying. So, to, to me, I think I think it's a very very difficult one. Okay. And, and I believe that uh, maybe as time goes on, they might be able to find a, a better way to resolve it because innocent people have died, which shouldn't have happened. I don't personally support violence. I don't see how you can use violence to achieve any means. And and if somebody is sitting in the comfort uh, of the villa and uh, you are inciting people from the outside to discredit him. You should, you should expect the unexpectable mm. from that government. Okay. Now, the uh, caucus of uh, the South-South senators at uh, the Senate, 
uh, has actually requested the uh, unconditional release of uh, Nandi Kano. And of course, uh, we have the names now. We have Senator Oji Uzo Kalu, the majority uh, whip. And uh, we also have uh, the Senator, we have Senator uh, Chukuma Utazi. Uh, we also have uh, Senator Eninaya. Eninaya, now we have Senator Eninaya Aberibe. And uh, we've got Senator Uche Equinife, Senator Stella Odwa, uh, Senator Sam Egu, Senator Obina uh, Ogba, and uh, other senators. Now, all these are senators uh, that uh, form uh, the caucus, uh, the Southeast caucus at uh, the Senate. Now, they have demanded the unconditional release of uh, Namde Kano. Uh, the Federal High Court has actually requested the federal government to uh, take Namde Kano back to uh, Kenya. That suggests that uh, uh, Kanu is going to be taken out of the country one more time, taken back to Kenya from where he was uh, brought in into the country. How do we look at all this in the light of the request that is on before the federal government uh, to ensure that Kanu uh, should be released? Well, you and I can agree very well that the legal system has been abused many times. And with all due respect to the legal practitioners, there are times when certain judgments are passed whether it is domestic issues, civil matters, criminal matters, that are, has questionable outcomes. You see, I think the executive arm of government, the legislative arm, and the judicial arm of government has failed this country to a very large extent because you really don't know who is correcting who and who is balancing the books when it comes to the issue of doing what is right. Mm. The, the sad part of it all is the fact that innocent people have been killed. Innocent people. Properties has been destroyed. Yeah, but we're looking at the judgments of the courts now. I mean, for you know, a court of appeal to have... Uh, so, I mean, I mean, if you look at what you just said, the Federal High Court, it means that some cases are institu inst instituted every day. If the Federal High Court on one particular aspect is saying X, Y, Z, the appeal court on the other aspect is saying another thing. Those two cases are very different cases. You see what I'm saying? Mm. You can have in the Kano's cases, for example, they have about five, six, seven cases running concurrently through the courts of law. And you really wonder, are they not addressing the same issues? I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. If the, if the, sup, if the uh, P court says X, Y, Z, you expect in the norms that the case migrates to the Supreme Court, which is the highest court in the land. But that is not the case. The Federal High Court comes back and says something different. It, it, that makes the whole matters even more difficult. That is why I said that they made the mockery of the judicial system, whereby even if in the canon deserve to maybe deserve to be freed now, perhaps because of the way he has come through. The federal government could easily be instituted in another case against him, in Portal Court, for instance, or in Nasarawa, and the, and the court may come up with another judgment and say, well, what that court has said of com same competent jurisdiction does not matter. Mm -hmm. So the question is, where is the citing end in all of this abuse of our arm of government, whether it is the judiciary, whether it is the legislative, or even the citizens who takes violence as a means of resolving issues? You see what I'm saying? Mm. So I, don't, I wouldn't want to put so much emphasis and importance in those things, but you would assume that when the, uh, a court of law pronounce a particular judgment, judgment. on issue, yeah. everybody involved in that law should respect that order. And, uh, you because know, in most cases in other um, countries in the world, when such judgments goes out, whether it is in any way or form, it's, you're supposed to respect that judgment. Now, Don, little wonder uh, what uh, the federal government really seek to uh, achieve in all of all this. Because uh, we understand that uh, when uh, the uh, Court of Appeal made their pronouncement that all charges, 50, about 15 charges now, we talked about them a while ago, all charges leveled against uh, Kano, that Kano was, was free of these uh, charges, uh, it became very clear that the federal government was going to appeal that judgment yes. at the, uh, at the, at the court, APS court, at the APS court now that's the, the the supreme court now we are getting this uh you know this position now that the federal court, uh, the federal high court has advised has asked the federal government to take kanu to uh, kenya now the question is uh, look at it we are in a political era political situation uh, nandu's case whether we like it or not is more or less like a political case now now the south east uh, senators yeah. in south east senators caucus now has said that, look, release this guy. Don't you think that these people, these senators, may work against the ruling party, may work against the APC, uh, you know, well. bearing in mind that a large amount of, uh, some, um, an amount of them are from the APC. Don't you, you see, think they may work against the APC see, in the um, election? Looking at the um, instances you've established and mentioned just now, a lot has got to do with the fact that what the federal government um, you know, chooses to gain 
from not listening or obeying the decision of the Supreme of the appeal court. Mm. Then again, you ask yourself, even in other cases instituted, what does the Federal High Court stance again from also pronouncing a different judgment in line with the same matter that is ongoing? Mm. If the appeal court has dealt with this matter and say all oh, charges dropped, what is the purpose of getting another judgment from a lower court when the matter is already on a in, in a much superior court to the Federal High Court. That is what I'm saying to you, that the abuse of the system, whether or not from those who are agitating for a particular purpose, whether rightly or wrongly, and for those who are in government who says, well, you cannot undermine the government, because at the end of the day, it is the responsibility of the government to look after the safety of these people, and innocent life has been lost, arson has been committed, they've jumped bail and X, Y, Z. They also feel within their rights that they have the reasons why they should make sure that they have their way in this matter. On, that is by the wayside. So like, there's no clear cut, like I said. And then the issue of the no, of the South is cackles. I really don't understand why now. Because why, in why our now? adage, for those who want to stop a fight, first needs to stop people from quarreling. Yeah, but but if it's okay, I'm saying? Uh, I mean the I mean, South is senators. For the first time, uh, I'm just been... hearing them. If they know very well that this matter is of interest to them, it's not about giving an ultimatum. They're in the party. They could have easily go out and seek audience with the presidency in any way of Now, when you talk about vote. audience, a lot of Eastern uh, politicians, uh, they've been uh, seeking audience. Yeah, I remember see, some time uh, that uh, leaders in, uh, in the APC and even in the PDP in the Southeast, they met with the president. And of course, the president said that he doesn't want to interfere, that it is purely a uh, legal issue. See, so but, but, right but, now that Nandi Kano has gotten a judgment yes. in the Court of Appeal, one would have expected that, okay, let the government uh, hit. Yeah, but you see, you see, this is the thing that I'm saying. In, 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 the, in the third world countries, the federal government seems to weigh and exercise, exhibit so much power. Um, likewise, the pronouncement of court judgments, whether it is rightly or they say sometimes money bags, for instance. Either way, there is a fault already. There is an error within the system, whether with those that is agitating or those that is to correct the agitation to say, well, the federal government and the kind of has a difference on political regional issues to do with governance. What well, the federal government says, well, we have no fault. Why it should incite these people, why they're in government in this country to create problems. Police officers were killed. I'm sure you remember. These are people who are supposed to be answerable to the federal government. They will not be happy about those things. Well, Properties some were persons, destroyed. Yeah, you some see what persons. I mean? At the end of the day, for the South East Caucus to come out now, it shows incompetence on their part. Because you know why? All this time and all this while, if a matter has to be settled politically, like you and I have agreed that it's a political matter, you must not run into having some sort of a judgment to intervene. You see what I'm saying? Mm. I don't know how many times they've come out to condemn the actions of maybe our brother Anam Dekano for what the way he has incited people to destroy and get people become victims who probably don't even have interest in the issue of being a Biafran. You know, at the end of the day, people are made to be scared. They are told, well, you sit at home on Monday. If you don't sit at home, we will come after you. Those people have the right to also ex exercise their franchise within the country and say, well, we know as much as these issues are ongoing, we, we choose to abstain from it. They are not given any choices, and these things seem to be done through an illegal means. Who do you not lay the blame on? The federal government, who feels the need to protect lives and properties? And for somebody who is somewhere in England or somewhere in the West, inciting people to create problems and kill innocent people who probably had no business with what is going on. You see, it becomes a very complex issue. So for the senators to come out now, it shows they don't even know what they're doing. Mm, no, you cannot know, say so. That, you know, uh, to an extent, I feel that way. If they know what they're doing, this sort of resolution, this sort of pronouncement should have come out to say, well, we should have a political resolution. We know that there's been force on the both parties. Yeah, but, remember, but from the position of remember, the federal government remember, now, federal do you government see the federal him. government? Because the federal government seems to, uh, to some persons, uh, they see the federal government as somebody that is initiating a problem, so to say now. You're initiating yeah, well, a problem. Well, the thing and is, at the same time, it appears you're not finding a lasting solution. The federal government, you might say, is initiating a problem. Depending on how you look at the issues and depending on how it affects you or your opinion on the issues, if the federal government argues that Unam the Kano was on bail, so report back, and he jumped bail, what do you tell them? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they can be looking at things from that angle. But at the same time, who has questioned why Unam the Kano has jumped bail? He has actually said, I've read on papers that where they wanted to take his life, he had to run away. 
You see what I'm saying? All right. Now, the you situation know? now, really, uh, it's on which of uh, the judgments the federal government is going to obey. Uh, just like what we said, that there is a subsisting uh, judgment that uh, uh, for, uh, the Court of Appeal gave that Nandi Kandu uh, has been uh, freed from all charges against him. And, of course, we also saw the Federal High Court in Abuja uh, advising the federal government to take Nandi Kandu to Kenya. So, from your own point of view, which of the judgments would you want to advise the federal government to uh, hit to? So, I mean, if the, if the, federal, if the federal High Court has said well, Nandi Kandu should be repatriated back to Kenya, how long has he been incarcerated for now? He's been at the DSS headquarters for probably two years or more. Mm -hmm. what, the fed, what, are, what are the judges, what are the legal system they're waiting for? What have they been waiting for? They don't need to wait for two years to ask the federal government to return him back. If they felt they had brought, brought him the wrong, through the wrong means, which some people claim, and perhaps some of us also feel that it was brought through like a backdoor Nadeko style of um, <coughs> uh, um, uh, apprehending him and brought him to Nigeria. The constitution is very clear. It shouldn't take the, um, the judiciary more than two months to decide to say, well, from what we see on ground and how the extradition treaty works, we think this man has been brought here wrongly. Take him back. I think in the last two years, it should be seen to have been, to, for them to have given some sort of judgment to say, well, it should be taken back to Kenya. Mm. You didn't need to wait for two years. This is what I'm saying. Mm. There's already an undertone, a political undertone, which needs to be settled through a political means. And the most important people who could take on, on this matter is mostly people in the legislative arm of government, the governors of the states, the traditional rulers and leaders from the southeast. For example, when the Igbo host case happened, you saw the intervention of high-profile people like Bolusio Gombasanjo. They got, they got involved in the process quite quickly. Even if the, the, the Indibu came and uh, Bawari, President Bawari said, well, let the court cases pro proceed. Like you rightly said, there are members of the APC who are senators. Yeah, who are also well, part of the South they should, have, they should have engaged with him and keep engaging with him so that they'll say, well, we know that two wrongs don't make it right. Mm. Even if you have some faults, I think we should resolve this issue politically and also speak to their own son. Okay. But they didn't do that. They waited all this while and then uh, they are giving an ultimatum when he has been incarcerated for two years. So those people who should be speaking for the Southeasterners, they don't really know why they are there. That is what I'm saying. Yeah, but you cannot say so well, except the fact that that's your opinion. But you, uh, you talked about, uh, you know, trying to look at the situation uh, politically, and that's what some uh, persons have uh, uh, also said. Uh, uh, Chief Ezefe is a renowned uh, Southeast, uh, uh, you know, political leader in, in the Southeast. As a matter of fact, he has uh, asked the federal government to ensure that the issue is settled. Now, uh, if we have to look at the issue politically, settling it politically, what are the parameters you may want to say? I think, I think to me, political settlement is the best bet, and political settlement can easily be achieved quite quickly because we know that the issue has become so complex, even difficult for the court to interpret. That it will take them two years for a federal court to say one thing, a case that has gone to appeal court and even heading into Supreme Court. Are you saying that that particular federal high court didn't know what to do? That these guys who now said that he should be released now knows better than them? <laughs> so, I mean, the whole thing is just muddled up. Mm. I think there must be frantic efforts to get him released, and there also should be frantic effort to get him to stop those kind of inciting his own brothers, our brothers in the East from self-destruction, because all the things that has happened, I know many people who are for victim of this unrest that in, in court was channeled back or traced back to Nambi mm. Many a times I've seen videos on the Biafra radio when he was in England, inciting, it's easy to be in England and tell people to fight for something that you believe is your way of liberating yourself, rather than actually, in my view, telling people to say, well, let everybody in the East go and get a voter's card. Mm. Because they listen to you, tell them to vote for particular candidates of your choice. So that at the end of the day, that lack of development that you are talking about, that this federal government is not giving to you, which in my own, my own opinion, the federal government has given them every money that they need. They've given them all their allocation. They've given them their security votes. They've given them ministerial slots. They've given them projects. They should go back and ask their representatives what they've done with their money, rather than inciting people because they are gullible or they don't really know what they're doing to engage in violence instead of using a, revolution, a revolutionary voter's card mm. to determine who leads them. Imagine having five governors in the east of the same uh, platform. Imagine, imagine having all the senators from the east through the same party, for example, say Abga. Imagine having the local government chairman. Imagine having the councillors and the House of Assemblies and the governors of the same political party 
they can come together as United, United Arab Emirates mm. and decide to make a decision on what they should do with the Southeast. Yeah. And from that point on, they can negotiate with other regions because you will now have a place to set an example. Mm. You can't self-destruct. They've given you so much money from the beginning of democracy, 1999. You've personally spent the money in the wrong way and you want to throw the blame to a, a, a man holding the center. Believe me, if you were you and you were president of this country, if I was, I'm sure that our action would be like close to what is happening now because nobody wants to be undermined whilst on the saddle. Mm. And I don't think that aspect of using violence to address anything. And those problems that we are talking about and the organogram of how Nigeria was formed, 90% of those problems started from the behavioral pattern of people from the same region, or our brothers from the southeast. Anyway, viewers out there, it's all time we permit us to take today on the program Parliament and Governance. And uh, once in stands clear that uh, the case of Nandi Kanu is something that a lot of Nigerians are so interested in, particularly the Easternans. So whether the federal government is going to uh, uh, finally release him to his freedom or not before the 2023 election, uh, we do not know. But for us here at Independent Radio and Television, we'll make sure that we keep on following uh, the news, uh, the headlines, as uh, they come your way, so that uh, you can be better informed. I want to say a very big thank you to Dion Igebo for finding time to uh, come on the show today. Thank, thank you, you so for much. having me. All right, so until the same time, on the same program, Parliament and Governance, my name is Evan Sunokuge. A very big thank you. Thank you.